Caution flags, do they help, do they hurt? It really just depends on when they come out. I'm Matt Faulkner, and this is Overtime. This week on Overtime, we're gonna be talking about pitch strategy. We'll try to help you understand when the driver you're rooting for should pit, or maybe shouldn't pit, and a lot of it has to do with luck. Now yesterday at Dover, you saw the 18 car near the end of the race pit right before a caution came out. This ended up being a bad thing. Um, Kyle went a lap down by the time the caution did come out and had to essentially start at the back of the line after taking what's called the wave around and then work his way up through traffic during the last run of the race. You'll probably remember before or as Kyle was pitting, one of the announcers on the TV said, oh, well, this could be really good for the 18 car. He may very much benefit from the fact that the caution came out right as he was pitting. What got my attention, we need to let score and reset. It may have ended up being a perfect storm for Kyle Busch and Alex Bowman. We're gonna see after it resets here. Now, now, given that this was a bad thing for the 18 car, we'd like to explain a little bit about why the announcer thought it could be a good thing. And the reason is this. When you pit under green right before a caution comes out, if you're able to complete your pit stop and get off pit road, the line at the end of pit road, before you get lapped by the leader, you maintain your position on the lead lap and when everyone else pits under caution, you'll pass them back and regain your spot near the front of the pack. However, if you don't get off pit road by the time you get lapped, you're stuck a lap down and even though everybody else still has to pit under caution, you're hung a lap down. You have to take what's called the wave around after everyone pits, but you still have to stay behind them at the start. And then, and, and that's what happened to Kyle. He was, even though he took the wave around and got his lap back, he had to start behind all the cars that pitted under caution because he lost a lap under green right before the caution came out and therefore was stuck at the back of the pack and had to work his way back up through traffic. One reason why Kyle went a lap down so easily is because Dover is only a mile long. It's a fairly short track. And the shorter the track, the more easy it is to get lapped by the field when you pit under green. Another example where this worked out well for one of our team cars was when Martin Truex pitted at Coda a few weeks ago. Um, James Small noticed a, a wreck happening on track and quickly called Martin into the pits to pit um, before the caution came out. Martin was able to get on pit road and the caution came out while he was on pit road. Since Coda is such a big track, it's over three miles long, um, Martin did not get lapped on pit road and he got out of pit road before the field lapped him under caution. And then when the entire rest of the field had to pit, or most of the cars at least, had to pit under caution, Martin was able to pass them all back and gain a bunch of track position on that call. Now in the explanation of why Kyle Busch went down a lap at Dover and why Martin did not go down a lap at Coda, uh, we mentioned a few things that we'd like to clarify. Pit road exit is a line at the end of pit road where you have to maintain pit road speed until you get to that line. That's the line where once you hit that, you can go wide open as fast as you wanna go. But that also, that line also determines whether you're a lap down or not uh, when the caution comes out while you're on pit road. So if you pit, you do your pit stop, and then the caution comes out, so the field's coming around. If you can get to pit road exit before the leader comes around and laps you at that point. If you beat him, you maintain your position on the lead lap. If the leader beats you, you lose a lap. You get hung a lap down and have to take the wave around and work your way back up through the field. So first, let's talk about the wave around. Any number of cars can take the wave around on a caution if it's eligible. The wave around requires the whole pack of lead lap cars to pit though. If everyone on the lead lap pits, the cars that are a lap down have the option to wave around and drive around the leader, make their lap up, and gain a lap. The negative side of the wave around is you're not allowed to pit. If you take the wave around, you can't pit. So if you only have 10 laps of fuel and you take the wave around, there'd better be another caution within that 10 laps or you're gonna have to pit and lose more laps than you probably lost prior to that. However, if not everyone on the lead lap pits, say one car on the lead lap stays out, and does not pit, no one's eligible for the wave around. So, this, the, so the wave around is, is solely dependent on everyone on the lead lap pitting. Only one car gets the free pass per caution and that car actually is allowed to pit on the same caution that they get their lap back. The requirement for getting the free pass is being the first car 
one lap down. So if there's 20 cars on the lead lap and you're in 21st one lap down, you get the free pass and can make up one lap on that caution to the lead lap cars, get your lap back if you're only one lap down, and you're also allowed to pit. Unlike the wave around where if you take the wave around, you cannot pit. So on a historical note, the free pass used to be called the lucky dog. So if you ever hear anyone refer to the free pass as the lucky dog, they're just calling it what it used to be called. The lucky dog originally was sponsored by Aaron's Furniture Rentals and their mascot was a dog. And so they called the free pass the lucky dog. But as soon as their sponsorship ended, they dropped the name lucky dog and now it's called the free pass. Hopefully this discussion of why the 18 car went a lap down during his pit stop right before the caution came out in Dover helps you understand a little bit more about why that was bad for them, how that could have been a good thing for them had they beat the, beat the leader out of the pits, and then hopefully an explanation of what a lucky dog, a wave around, and a free pass, and a pit road start line um, helps understand why the rules are the way they are and the difference between those two things, and hopefully helps you be able to coach your driver to a win next week.